I was in the control room and I got the call. Couldn't check it because it was a meeting. It was opening night of the show that I was doing. I didn't recognize the number on my phone. I usually don't pick up the phone. When I see a, a number I don't recognize, I plan to make sure that it's a real call. And I saw the message and I was like, okay, that's weird. But I was like, I'm taking this call. She's like, are you sitting down? And I was just like, then I was no longer sitting down. <laughs> I was just like, what the, what? I could not believe it. I'm over here with the phone like this. And I said, no way. And she was like, yes way. I just trying to explain to her how exciting. Then I started crying and then I felt goofy. She told me that I was a winner and of course I cried. I just cried, I couldn't believe it. I still can't believe it. I took a, a full lap around the studio. <laughs> My two apprentices are looking at me like, what the hell is going on? I don't know, but he looks happy as it. I was like on the floor in the hallway. Crying. It was just a lot of state of shock, disbelief, happiness, me, really, all of these emotions just in one, and it hasn't stopped. And I was like, give me some time, let me digest it. This is amazing for me, but my excitement is always super low key. I'm still actually trying to digest it all. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> so it's like a dream comes true. It was a red letter day, for sure. <laughs>
you know, people being scared to dance this music because of all the stigmas, you know, like it's devil's music and stuff like that, but it's beautiful black music that just wants to hug you. My family is a big part of why I even exist in this movement. They started the first movements of Bomba here in Chicago. Out of all my cousins, I was always ready. I was always ready, ready, and I never let it go. It was something that really helped me um, get through life. And we started La Escuelita, and it has been one of the best investments I've made. So somebody paved the way for me, so I gotta pave some way for someone else. Bomba is a very male-dominated genre. And so even part of our history, women were not allowed to drum. And even when we danced, we were more accessories for the males. I'm part of this movement. I'm part of this movement that when there's like so many women in Bomba just drumming and everything, I'm gonna be part of the history of, of women that made it happen. And I'm gonna continue because we have to. Stephanie Diaz, actor, puppetry artist. The shorthand is puppeteer. You might think that you're hiring me for the way that they look, but you're actually hiring me for the way that they move. That's my passion. That's endlessly fascinating to me. I'm really interested in the gestures that cross cultures. Little things like the difference between this is different than this, right? But we all know what those things mean. I've been an actor for a long time, and as a Latinx identified artist, I try really hard to pursue creative teams that are telling stories that are something other than the downtrodden brown woman that cries. Uh, you have your passport and ticket? When I got my first taste of casting, I thought, oh, I can help open the door for actors to get into rooms that maybe they wouldn't otherwise be thought of to get into. That passion for being able to affect change for others grew into a very fruitful collaboration with the Chicago Inclusion Project. We didn't know it was gonna become what it is today, but we knew that it was a way that we could talk really openly about the need to dismantle the white cis head by default model of American theater that has just pervaded the art form for generations. And we've been able to do that. Damon Locks, musician, educator, visual artist. My work is moving around in different spaces, trying to communicate ideas trying to spread those ideas out. I do sound and create work in collaboration with Move Me Soul. I've spent a lot of time with the Prison and Neighborhood Arts Project, being a person that teaches art, but also like generates projects that are collaborative with the students in the class. Under the current law, my out date is 2048. I'll be 81 years of age upon release. Teaching artists, in my brain's a little redundant because an artist should do that. The teaching and the student thing, that's just the framework for engaging, you know, and communicating. Society in which all people can the more people I can communicate with, the more that that kind of generative energy continues. And whether those ideas are visual, sonic, you know, collaborative, I need to find those ways to uh, express them. I've done enough things now that those disparate things are kind of collecting into shapes. It seems more recognizable. People are like, oh, you do the thing where you work in prison and you teach stuff and you work with dancers and then you DJ and you have a band and you do visual art. Oh yeah, I know that thing. Jamani Taylor, tap dancer. The professional tap dancer intelligently um, understands rhythm, period. The upbringing of tap dancing was with the culture of jazz music. So I am doing everything improvisationally with musicians all over Chicago the traditional old school, whatever that may be, jazz music, or the progressive jazz music. 
in my past work, I've been able to create situations where little moments can happen within my playing next to musicians. It really feels like heaven on earth, like nothing is better. That is what I'm searching for now, and that's what I'm trying to keep creating right now. Because tap is kind of like, in a sense, a natural action, like I'm just putting on shoes and I'm dancing on wood. It feels so tribal, um, so it automatically feels like a meditation. It really does help me get through this life. Outside of religion, tap dance is the thing that I feel most connected to the universe while doing. Norman T, designer, educator, artist. I play in materials and I, I do prototypes, particularly in furniture, because we all interact with it in one way or another. But as a furniture designer, I think it's super important to me to make the user use it a little differently and, and then question that. I'd like to think of myself as a community member, so it's really important that my work is out in front of others. The ingredients can be different, but I think that there's a, a major part that involves people. If it's interacting with someone, improving someone's life, exposing them to something new or different, be it in the studio or be it in the street, makes it feel worthwhile to me. As a designer, I just, I have so much more that I want to do besides a piece of furniture. So it's really like incorporating the lifestyle and things that I enjoy being around. I know other people do too. It's just a matter of just creating that space for it to happen. Bethany Thomas, singer, actor, songwriter. I've started saying I'm a performer who splits her time between theater and music. So yeah, I'm, a, I'm an actor and I'm a singer. I do all kinds of both things. <laughs> I see through your tears. My voice is my primary instrument. I've been singing so long and so many different kinds of things that approaching something vocally for me, there's not a lot of like hills I need to get over in my own brain or my own neurosis to be like, oh, I can do that. My voice can physically do it. I just kind of usually have to wrap my own brain around what it means and what it means for me to be doing it. That makes it so much easier to open up to the other things about the music. I don't have to jump through hoops about whether I can, it's just how. I feel a certain freedom trying whatever because there's not a lot of precedence for somebody that looks like me. But I think that gives me the freedom to go in and say like, well, I don't, they're obviously not wanting me to be like this person or this person that's done it before because there's no way I'm going to be like that because I look nothing like them. So I get to come in and just bring me. Sam Trump, musician, curator, director. I've kind of established this sound as sophisticated soul. It's like classic soul. A lot of people call it smooth, you know. I wasn't looking for love. What I like about sophistication is there's like vulnerability and there's there's chill, you know, and there's a grown and sexy vibe. There's a certain standard that comes along with the word sophisticated. There's no other place I'd rather be than here with you, staring in your eyes. The message I'm trying to convey through my music is that of kindness, love, tenderness and vulnerability. It all needs to be talked about, you know? I feel like it becomes obsolete when it's ignored. We are all in this together. Don't ever think that you are alone. If That's like a, a very basic desire of the human being. Tap 
tapping into those ideas and concepts in different ways, I think is like the clever way to do it through my art. Santiago X, multidisciplinary artist. My work revolves around um, indigenous futurism and actualizing uh, an indigenous future, reclaiming the indigenous landscape through art and technology, the built environment. It becomes tangible through architectural installation, land art, and new media. I kind of found my way through art, through architecture. The art gave me more freedom and more experience of different mediums. Moving here and just walking the streets of Chicago, Illinois, and I see these indigenous words and I see jerseys of a severed head of an indigenous leader. The land itself, the, the history here, was begging for intervention, begging for a reawakening. On the street level, I do an installation of a trash can where people put Blackhawks jerseys into that trash can, painting this threshold of solidarity, painting this threshold of understanding within the indigenous community and then also in the supporting community around us. It really helps um, to fortify, I think, this, this notion of an indigenous future. The experience that I want to elicit is contemplation of the human condition and our role in the cosmos and articulate what it means to be human on Earth. It's more than just making pretty things. It's about trying to change the world or shape the world in a, a more harmonious way, using the artwork as, as, as a catalyst for that. Arts Award being specifically for Chicago artists is Chicago taking care of its own. There's a lot of reassurance in just knowing that my city's got my back. Chicago, Chicago is home. I love Chicago. I don't see myself creating anywhere else. Chicago is a very artist-driven city. Everybody is here for the art and not the commerce. The hustle is real here. People are looking for my art, not for my physical body. The artists, the creators, we're having an understanding. I would say Chicago is where I became an artist. It's where my soul is. It's incredibly diverse. It's incredibly loving. It's incredibly giving. And there's organizations such as Three Arts that are like catering to these artists. This award means that I get to do some of the things I've been thinking about. It allows my artistic practice to be more sustainable, but also allows me to dig deeper. I'm excited that it's not just the money, but just the support and the idea that you think I'm somebody <laughs> worth <laughs> listening to. It's given me a feeling of, okay, I am good enough, and I know what to do. I've been doing it for a long time. It's, it's a confirmation of what I'm doing is right. It just makes it all more possible. You know, I'm usually inspired by other people. It's very rare when you're inspired just by yourself. I am really going to live as I am and as an artist. I'm really excited to be saying I'm a Three Arts Awardee and I'm here to create. What's up? If I did all this work with $12 in my pocket, imagine what I can do now. <laughs> imagine I'm unstoppable. <laughs>